Okay, hello, welcome to our live lecture or recording of live lecture if you're watching this as a recording in NAVCOM AMT 181 Navigations and Communications. Today we're going to talk about radio history and principles, frequencies and radio waves, and transmitters, receivers, and transceivers. Communication systems defined as the voice transmission and reception from aircraft to other aircraft and from aircraft to ground stations. <clears throat> navigation systems in terms of aviation can be referred to as the electronic navigation systems used in aircraft to solve navigational problems. Avionics. Where did we get the term avionics? Well, avionics was made up of the conjunction of the words aviation and electronics, so you get avionics. A general name, avionics is a general name for the electronic equipment found in modern, modern aircraft. The term avionics was not commonly used until the 1970s. Solid state electronics were not introduced in large numbers until the 1960s. A little bit of history as far as radios are concerned in aviation. We start back in the 1920s. World War I established a great need for communications among aircraft to aircraft and aircraft to ground. Radio beacon direction finding developed for navigation. And the first blind flight, uh, blind landing of an aircraft accomplished safely with instrument navigation and radio communication. In the 1930s, we had instrument navigation certification for pilots begin. The first completely radio-controlled blind landing was successful. Ground-based navigational beacons continue improving throughout the 1930s, and high-frequency radar was developed by the end of the decade. In the 1940s, World War II uh, shows that the development of aircraft radio navcom is crucial. Aircraft communications radios were necessary on board aircraft, even though they were extremely large and heavy. Uh, if you look in the 8083, there's a good picture of what that radio equipment looked like, and it was very large, um, had, a, you know, was a massive amount of weight for these aircraft compared to what our radio and NAVCOM equipment look like today. Also in the 1940s, VHF was developed. We had ILS installed for blind landings, and VOR Navigations Network was developed. So a lot happening in the 1940s. The 50s to 60s, civilian air transport increased. NAVCOM equipment continued to be adjusted and refined. Solid-state radio was in large-scale development, and satellites were launched and found to be useful for positioning. 70s, 80s, and 90s, military begins to use satellite navigation. Uh, GPS introduced and became fully operational in 1994. And there was a development of long-range navigation systems, low range. So that brings us to today. The new millennium brought heavy reliance on GPS of aircraft. Automatic dependent surveillance broadcast technology is used now to separate air traffic because um, it's become so inundated with air traffic on the radio waves. The Telecommunications Act of 1996, the FCC eliminated individual licensing requirements for all domestically operated aircraft. Prior to 1996, every aircraft equipped with a radio was required to have an aircraft radio station's license as well as anyone who may operate the radio, was required to have a radio telephone operator's license. So uh, keep that in mind. Pre-1996 and post-1996, and what those uh, meant for the Telecommunications Act. FCC restricted radio telephone operator's permit. So... In the U.S., the FCC issues a restricted radio telephone operator's permit for U.S. pilots, but you, it's only needed to be used internationally. It is not required that this uh, permit be displayed while flying within the United States. So domestic flights for us, it's not required 
that that permit be displayed. NAVCOM system components. Marker beacon receivers. This is just a list of some of our NAVCOM components. We have marking beaker receivers, instrument landing systems, distance measuring equipment, DME, radar, area navigation systems, RNAV, omnidirectional radio receivers, that is our VOR, and satellite-based global positioning systems, GPS. Eventually, I'm going to want you guys to know all of the acronyms for these things that we're talking about. Um, whenever I refer to RNAV or VOR, I'm going to expect that you know what I'm talking about. What's the expectation for us? As AMTs, you are not expected nor allowed to do maintenance on any av avionics systems or equipment. Repair, calibration, and often installation of aircraft electronics is the responsibility of authorized avionics technicians or repair stations. What AMTs are expected to do. We are expected to understand the basic theory and operation of electronic equipment in aircraft. Be competent in the basic installation of electronic components. So removal and install of radio component components, um, stuff like that. And we're expected to perform visual inspection of electronic uh, equipment for correct security, proper working condition, suitable bonding, shock mounting, and things of that nature. Basic radio principles. Our basic radio principles, um, this is just a list of a few ways radio interact with you in your everyday life. You can review that, but um, just showing you that there, uh, we inter interact with radios in a lot of ways, and it's only been increasing. Basic concept radio communications involves the transmission and reception of electromagnetic or radio energy waves through space. This is a picture from the 8083 handbook, just two different examples of a digital tuner for radio frequencies and, a, and an audio panel selector. For an antenna to radiate efficiently, a transmitter must supply it with an alternating current of the selected frequency. The frequency of the radio wave radiated will be equal to the frequency of the applied current. Frequency of the electrical alternation is called a sine wave. The frequency of the sine wave is the number of times it oscillates up and down per second. So in AM, if we are tuned to an AM540 station, that would give us 540,000 cycles per second. FM, we have, if we're tuned into FM95.3, that would give us 95,300,000 hertz. Just an example there. There are three types of frequency modulation. We have pulse, amplitude, and frequency. Pulse modulation is simply turning the sine wave on and off. It is a process that is good for Morse code and setting radio controlled clocks. So this was also this was obviously um, the very first type of modulation. Amplitude modulation, which is what AM stands for. This is our AM radio stations and television pictures. The peak to peak voltage of the sine wave changes as the amplitude of the modulation changes. And then we have FM modulation, frequency modulation. The sine wave width does not change, but the, but the frequency does. Um, so with amplitude modulation, we are going from peak, the peak to peak voltage. Frequency modulation, we are changing the frequency, but not the width of the sine wave. Mounting of avionics equipment, um, I, you guys should know that we have a few different types of mounting of these equipment. So it can be panel mounted, combo panel and remote mounted, um, or simply just remote mounted. Remote mounted meaning they are line replaceable units with control heads that are panel mounted in separate bays of the aircraft. So we can have panel, remote, or a combo of both panel and remote. Aviation frequencies. This is a note 
here from your uh, 8083 handbook. A wide range of frequencies are used for low frequency LF at 100 kilohertz, 100,000 cycles per second, to super high frequency SHF at nearly 10, 10 gigahertz. Uh, what's that? 10 billion cycles per second. The Federal Communications Commission (FCC) controls the assignment of frequency usage. So, you want to know that who controls the assignment of these frequency usages? So that's the FCC. This is a good diagram from your 8083. Um, just shows common radio frequencies and what those frequencies are used for as it relates to aviation. So as an example, we have oops, we have uh, weather radar here used on 9.375 gigahertz, which is super high frequency, or SHF. Um, and then this diagram also shows you, you know, where in measurements of hertz those frequencies stand all the way from VLF to EHF and everything in between. I would know all those for your quizzes and tests. Know the ranges. Uh, a list of some of our communication systems equipment. Uh, we have VHF, HF, ACARS, Aircom, CellCal, SATCOM, Intercom, PA, uh, and Interphone. We will get into those more in detail uh, in further lectures. But moving into radio waves, so how radio waves work. Uh, to transmit radio waves, an AC generator is placed at the midpoint of an antenna. Uh, as AC current builds and collapses in the antenna, a magnetic field also builds and collapses. An electrical field also uh, builds and subsides as the voltage shifts from one end of the antenna to the other. Magnetic and electric fields fluctuate around the antenna at the same time. The antenna is half the wavelength of the AC signal received from the generator. At any one point along the antenna, voltage and current vary inversely to each other. Radio wave uh, frequency is determined by AC input. Radio waves are directional and extend out into space at 186,000 miles per second. The distance depends on frequency and am amplification of the AC signal sent to the antenna. The electric field and the electromagnetic field are at 90 degree angles to each other. This is an uh, example of that. So we have our uh, electric field in red here, and our magnetic field, also called our electromagnetic field, in blue, and these are at 90 degree angles of each other. Um, the black line just stands for direction of uh, outgoing signal traveling. Some radios. There's two types commonly used for communication and aviation. We have VHF, very high frequency. This is used by uh, air traffic control and operates in the VHF band between 118 and 136.975 MHz. We have HF, high frequency, used to extend range communication, uh, operates between 2.0 and 29.999 MHz. HF and HF systems. Both VHF and HF system, uh, systems utilize transmitters, receivers, and antennas. Transceivers are, are uh, units that include both the transmitter and receiver in one unit. VHF and HF systems are completely independent of each other and utilize their own transmitter, uh, transmitters, receivers, and antennas. VHF systems are found in any aircraft, capable of two-way radio communication, and are largely used for controlling traffic. HF systems are found in large transport category aircraft that may need to communicate over longer, uh, large distances, such as overseas. A little bit more about our HF high frequency. It operates on the frequency range of 2.0 to 30 megahertz. The HF like we said, is used for long-distance radio transmissions, such as overseas, aircraft which fly long distances, such as intercontinental flights. 
Uh, high frequency transmissions are used for voice communications or digital data. High frequency uh, transmissions, these are known as sky waves. Uh, HF component, we have receiver transmitter, uh, the high frequency control unit, antenna coupler, and the antenna itself. So those are the components that you will find in a high frequency um, system, radio system. The VHF. Primary uh, VHF is considered primary communication radios used in aviation. The frequency range that it operates on is 118 megahertz to 136.975 megahertz. Each party transmits and receives on the same channel, but only one party can transmit at a time. VHF radios are used for communications between aircraft and uh, ATC, air traffic control. Also used for air-to-air -air communication between aircraft uh, between aircraft with each other. So VHF, UHF, and SHF, uh, these are all considered space waves. This is very high frequency, ultra high frequency, and super high frequency. And um, you can see here the uh, gauge of hertz that it operates on. So all three of these known as space waves only capable of line of sight transmission and do not re refract off of the ionosphere. Um, so that's important to know because HF does refract off the ionosphere. Um, just make a note of that. The, the higher frequencies, um, they are only capable of line of sight transmission because they do not refract off the ionosphere. Most aviation communication and navigational aids operate with these space, wave, space waves. And then we have VLF and MF, which is not very frequently used. Um, very low frequency and low frequency and medium frequency. Uh, both of these, meaning VLF and MF, <coughs> Both have relatively long wavelengths, so that equals long antennas, um, very long antennas. These uh, frequencies are known as ground waves or surface waves. Ground waves are uh, particularly useful for long distance transmissions. Our ADF, Automatic Direction Finders, and the LORAN Navigational Aids, they can use these low frequencies. Transmitters, receivers, and transceivers. Transmitters consist of precise oscillating circuitry that creates an AC carrier wave frequency. This combined with amplification circuits, um, <clears throat> it is this is combined with amplification circuits and includes other circuitry to accept input information and process it for loading onto a carrier wave. Modulator circuits modify the carrier wave with the processed information signal. The transmitter prepares and sends signals to an antenna that radiates the waves out into the atmosphere. Receivers. Receivers, uh, they have circuitry to separate the information signal from the carrier wave. Receivers also prepare it for output to a device, such as a speaker or a display, like a digital display. This output is then introduced into the transmitter. <clears throat> An example of a receiver, a uh, common receiver is called the super heterodyne receiver. The, this is a picture of one of those, just your classic um, receiver. Radio frequency must be amplified. An oscillator in the receiver is used to compare and select the desired frequency out of all of the frequencies picked up by the antenna. The undesired frequencies are sent to ground. And transceivers. Transceivers are a communication radio that transmits and receives. <coughs> the same frequency is used for both, for both transmitting and receiving. When transmitting, the receiver does not function. The push-to-talk switch um, in a transceiver blocks the receiving circuitry and allows the transmitter circuitry to be active. 
In a transceiver, some of the circuitry is shared by the transmitting and receiving functions of the device. So is the antenna. Transceivers are considered half-duplex systems where communication can occur in both directions, but only one party can speak while the other party must listen. <laughs> VHF aircraft communication radios are usually transceivers. And that's it. I know I went through that pretty fast, um, but it's a lot faster. We're not in the classroom, but there is a lot of information in these slides, so make sure you're reviewing this information um, because it will become essential for, especially for your tests, and it is applicable to your projects in lab. Um, so I think there's a few people on here live. That concludes lecture today. If you guys have any questions, you can go ahead and type in the chat. <laughs> Otherwise, um, Lab is canceled today. I hope that everyone did receive that email. Lab is canceled due to the fires and evacuation orders. The campus is closed. Um, as far as I've seen, labs will, res will re be resuming tomorrow. I have not seen any other communication as far as that, but just continue to check your email. <coughs> um, for updates before you head into lab, even tomorrow, just just check um, and see if there's anything saying that the campus is still closed. Uh, will the slides be on Canvas? The slides will be on Canvas tomorrow. So if you guys need <coughs> to review the slides, you're going to have to watch the recording of this lecture today. But the, I, the slides are always available 24 hours after lecture, so they will be available tomorrow. They're not available for you guys to take the quiz with, but you do have lecture that you can review, okay? Um, so for this class, as far as I know, we will be in lab on Thursday. Um, continue to work on the homework in your lab packet. Don't forget to take the lecture quiz that will be posted today at 6 o'clock. <laughs> must be completed by midnight in order for you to be counted as present for lecture. Um, I am also making a new, on your syllabus, there was a, <coughs> there was a, um, uh, like a schedule for the, for the lectures in this class. Uh, it was brought to my attention that the page numbers are a little wonky, so I'm working on a new, um, what do you call it, a new outline to give you guys so that you can better follow along with the information that we'll be going over in lecture each week. And I think that's it. So just um, pay attention to your email, check for updates for the campus closure. Um, don't forget to take the quiz tonight and I will see you guys. I will have lecture on Thursday and I plan on having lab on Thursday as well, unless we receive any communications otherwise, okay? <coughs> so you guys are free to log off. <coughs> Don't forget to take the quiz. If you have any other questions, go ahead and type them in the chat.